right here is another hose clamp we have to undo. This goes to the union on the other side of the engine over here. It runs underneath. All right, we got tons and tons of space now. All right, ready to take this off. Head's, head's gonna fly off after this part. This is, the intake's really the most complicated part. You can see we have spaces in between the runners. It's probably hard to see, but there's two bolts, two bolts, two bolts at six, and there's one on each end, and they're all 13 millimeters, so that's eight total. We're gonna pop this off. Remove the vacuum line from the brake booster, and then we can take the intake manifold right off. Attached to the bottom of the intake manifold is a hard elbow. You'll notice a vacuum hose goes to this, coming directly off the intake manifold. Remove this, and then you're done. Boom, baby. All done. All right, we're going to get the valve cover off. These are E10 bolts all around here. Five on each side, 10 total. And then we have to get these, I believe this is a cam position sensor. You want to... Squeeze both sides very carefully and pull up and it should pull right out. You want to remove this one off the valve cover. We also have a PCB over here you want to remove as well. These cam caps all have the same bolts and I'm going to work on them from the inside out, take them off one, just slowly one quarter turn at a time. You want to make sure to organize these. Keep them in order, keep them on intake and exhaust side. Take all this old oil you got here, just rub it all over. Just trying to protect the lobes. Don't want anything to get rusty. Um, We'll cover it all up with saran wrap. I believe these are the same cams, so I'm going to put this exhaust one in a separate box and label it exhaust, just to make sure we don't mix up the cam gears or anything. And the journals go back to where they should go and match your cam caps. There you go, one exhaust all wrapped up. I'm gonna do the same with the intake one here too. Ooh, careful. That was just the cam hitting this bolt in here. There's a bolt right on the corner. Okay, so as far as the lifters, you could pop these out with a magnet very easily. If you are keeping your old ones, you need to keep them in the order. And you zoom in here, you can see it's like six, seven, eight. Maybe you could use that as a number, but whatever, I'm not going to do that. So I'm just gonna pop them out. I bought new ones. That's what you should do too, in my opinion.
we are so close to getting the head studs out here. Basically everything's out of the way. We do have to get down here, the exhaust manifold. As you can see here, we have one stud down there, two, three, four bolts. All four of these bolts are 12 millimeter. This gets the shield off, then we get the manifold off. These bolts are quite rusty and they're going to be stuck in place because of heat. If you don't have a half inch ratchet, definitely soak these in PB Blaster. Alright, time to do the Zox Manifold. Down at the bottom, that's a different part we'll do last, but there's a brace and bolts down there. But here we have 10, one down here in the corner, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and then there's a double one over here in the corner too, 10. And these are all going to be 13 millimeter bolts. Let's get them loose. All right, all the bolts are, or all the nuts are loose. You see? All right, and so the next step. We have three, one, two, and then there's one here in the back, it's hard to see. Three 14 millimeter bolts. And we also have a bracket down here, right there, that we also have to undo. You can see the red socket right here. That's where I have the bolt on the bracket, on the brace. So let's get it all done. This is a good time to remind you to save your efforts, unlike I did here. If you leave the exhaust manifold bolts to the head, you can do this part first. It'll be a little easier to undo these nuts because they're quite stiff. I like to store the nuts back on there and cover up the catalytic converter there and nothing falls into it. And I put the brace bolt back in so we have sturdiness uh, underneath is a flex pipe and we don't want to have it putting all the weight on the flex pipe. Okay, so before we pull the head off of the engine, literally all we have left on the head is the actual bolt right now. Everything else is done as we've shown. I do need to take the inlet hose off here. That's only two E Torx, not a big deal, E10. Very easy to pop that off. And then on this side of the engine, we'll see the EGR valve here. Zoom out a little bit for you there. You'll see the EGR valve here, and then there's an actual plate that this all sandwiches on. It's also like a union for and a bracket for our rear coolant return hose. We'll flip around. And... So this whole shebang has to come off. Let's pull this little clip off. And this must be a coolant temp sensor right here. Pull that out. You can see this is where our lower hose return is, and this is the bracket bolt. This is a 12 millimeter, and then we have one E-Torx here. We have another E-Torx down here, and then there's a third one right here next to the 12 millimeter. And these are gonna be E14 E-Torx. So let's pull this off now. Now it's time to see just how corrosive the wrong coolant can be on your engine. We are moving on to the thermostat housing, which only has two E10 E-Torx bolts, comes off real easy. When manufacturers say to use a certain type of coolant, and you'd be like, nah, I'm gonna use the cheap stuff. Okay, always do a quick check around the head while you're at it, because I almost forgot to tell you, there are one, two, three, four things we gotta remove here on the end of the head, I'll show you now. We need to take off the cam sensor here, and there is right underneath that a T30. There's a T30 here, and there's a T30 Torx here on the corner. And all of these are holding the inside of the timing cover, which is actually steel to the side of the head, so you definitely gotta get this done. For right here on the cam sensor, this is also going to be a E8 E Torx. Okay, now, in order to get to this one, it's a bit like a riddle. 
because you can't get a socket in. You can see from the line here, it's gonna get in your way. We have to get this down here, this timing belt idler pulley out of the way. And on the other side, we have to get this one out of the way. And this will reveal, there's gonna be a nut on the bottom for the, a stud on this side, a bolt on this side, and there should be something very similar to a 15 millimeter, if I'm not mistaken, at the very bottom. So it'll be like one, two, and then in the lower down there, it's hard to see, but we'll get out, you'll see. Okay, so for the idler on this side, it's a stud, a 13 millimeter, and on this one, it is also a 13 millimeter bolt. Okay, so um, in between these two bolts here, these are all gonna be 17. The timing tensioner is already loose, but let's go ahead and fully remove it now. Here's a much better view of all the bolts that I was trying to point out earlier, but you really couldn't see. All right, finally, we are actually at the last part. We are removing the head bolts. You will need a T55 Torx or TX55 Torx socket. And I put a actual order that I'm gonna be doing this in and a diagram here. If you're gonna be doing this for yourself, you know what to do. And uh, that should be everything. We should be able to pop the head right up after this. Let's get to work. And you can see it's just literally eating the head gasket. <laughs> One of these are not like the others. I mentioned in part one, the injectors were pretty crusty. Even after moving all the stuff out of the way, knocking a lot of the rust and dirt out of the tip of the injectors, these are still quite bad. I'm going to actually pull the access panel to the fuel pump, look inside the tank and check it out. If your injectors look like this, I highly recommend you do the same. And you can check out how to do this in the next video. To add to the list, I'm also going to get a very nice Gates tensioner for the Serpentine belt system. The one that's on here is pretty atrocious and uh, doesn't spin up so well anymore. Quite rusty. You can find this in the description. Boom, look at that. That is what we call a short block in the biz, not a long block. <laughs> I have the head over here you can see. There's that guy chilling, waiting to go to the machine shop. So the goal is this weekend, I want to drop this off in a machine shop, might get it back in a week. I'm not really sure. I've called like four shops yesterday with no actual success. One quote of $320 to shave the head down and put in new valve seals, which is normally $150. So uh, a refurbished head is $440 and new ones $500. So yeah, that's a little, little outrageous. Uh, I, I guess that's like a, F off price. We don't want to do it. <laughs> and if you're gonna make us, we're gonna charge you a lot. But uh, we'll see. I I want to. I might have to go further out of town a little bit. That's not a big deal to find a good machine shop to get it done. But I did find on our injector rail here. I did find some some yucky in the bottom of it. Some. It almost looks like rust. Pretty sure it's rust. With this car only having ninety nine thousand miles, it's probably sat a very long time. So there's probably water in the bottom and. Who knows, probably all kinds of sediment. I'm sure the fuel pump sock that it has on there is probably filthy. So I think I'm gonna have to drop the fuel tank. 
The good thing about that is it's full, so that's good. Great, great for me. <laughs> uh, that's never good, but that's pretty much it. We'll get to the rest of this later on. Come check out the ending and when it's running nice and clean and like new again. I also found out the fuel door back here is like stuck open, so I have to do a new latch for that as well. It's always fun to have side jobs when you're doing a big job already. So, thanks for watching guys. If you want to see more fun DIY projects like this on a budget, please do subscribe and like. If you want to support the Patreon channel, you can do that as well. All donations go straight into projects like this for more content for the channel. Thanks for watching guys. Have a good day. Bye.